this is my official test of my new video glasses. So, I think I'm recording. If I'm not, then I'm just a crazy guy talking to himself. Tractor started this morning, but I'll tell you, it didn't want to start. It tried not to start. It got to minus, it got to minus 40 last night and minus 40 is the same Celsius and Fahrenheit. So, it, it was cold. So like I said, I just gonna feed some beet pulp and then we'll I'll mix some silage up and then we'll stop for lunch. Look at how slow the I don't know what I don't know where to put my head yet. So this is the first video I've ever shot, so I don't know where I have to look. So anyhow that grapple went up pretty slow. You can run them for an hour and once you start to use them is when the oil really warms up. I forgot to put my counterweight on. Oh well, I'll feed this one and then I'll come back and put a bale on the back. I like to have a bale on the back because it helps give me more weight on the back end of the tractor, which it needs more. I don't have any fluid. Here you can only get the calcium and it's big, big money to put fluid in your tires. And I've got wheel weights on the back, but I need to have a couple more stacked on there. Sorry, I just pulled the glasses off to check. It's supposed to have a blue light that flashes in the corner of your eye so you know that it's working, but I wasn't 100% sure if I saw it or not. The sun's out now. It's, it's 11 o'clock in the morning, so this tractor's been running for over an hour. But I didn't plug my pickup in last night. And I've had that pickup for five years, and I'm not proud that I haven't plugged it in ever before, but I've just never needed to. When it's been really nasty, you know, I was going, I was, it was during calving time, and I would go out and check every hour, so the truck just barely, it would never get cool before it would be running again. So, it's Boxing Day case that I don't get this uploaded right away. I normally try to upload at night and then you get them just one day late generally. That's how I do things. So now I got two spears sticking out behind me so the cows are a little more savvy and but I'll tell you, I don't like going into the calves like this. Those heifers get running around. I really don't want to have a heifer shish kebab. But my wife surprised me about getting these glasses. She had me look at some early in fall that were on a deal on, I don't know what, on an auction site she was bidding on them. And you could, you could bid on them, or you could just buy them now. And the price, she wanted to know if I should just if she just buy them now. I said we can't afford that. Just don't worry about it. I said I'll be okay without glasses. We'll wait till we have some better times. 
but when we were, kids were all done opening their gifts at Christmas time, all of a sudden she goes from behind the tree and pulls out this one, and I figured that she'd just given me some socks or something like that, but here was these glasses, so it was a real surprise. I had no idea, but I guess she said she'd had them for for quite a while and she had a really hard time not giving them to me numerous times because she was so excited. Counterweight now. I didn't used to have a three point hitch bale carrier, and I would carry two bales all the time with the front of the tractor. And then I had some loader damage, and I decided that if I was going to make things last, that I will carry two bales of straw and I will load and unload two bales of hay. But I won't, you know, before I was, I was carrying two bales, like down, we, the hay yard's half a mile away, and I would carry two bales with me up and back all the time. And, you know, you tried not to go more than five mile an hour, and it was a lot of strain on the loader. So now, if I go back and forth, I don't, I don't carry. Just one in the front, one in the back. Ty had surgery and got his teeth cut out, his wisdom teeth, and he had some teeth they call a tumor tooth, or two of those. And so he's just come out the first time to do chores today. You can go to the house. Uh, they'll be fine. Thanks, Ty. So. They'll biopsy those other teeth that were coming. One was in the roof of his mouth and one was down on the bottom of his jaw. But because they aren't normal and they grow after, they treat them as a tumor. But he had one cut out of the roof of his mouth when he was in grade four. So it's something he's had before, but he had a wis his wisdom mouth, wisdom teeth out. And so he wasn't allowed to lift or strain or do anything. And so today he came out to help and actually uh, Wyatt, well Wyatt just rode in the truck with us, but he came out and watched us do chores this morning. And that's the first time since the end of October when he was in his, his car accident that, that he's come out to the cows. Well, I mean, I guess he, I drove him down to look at us is for the 4-H calf he picked, or I picked for him. But other than that, he hasn't been with the cows since his wreck. So he enjoyed going out, but he got a, a little a t Samsung, Samsung tablet for Christmas, and he said on that he wanted a picture for the wallpaper, and, and he thought if he got a picture of his heifer, that'd be kind of cool. So that was the real motivation for him to come out but I think in the new year I'm gonna have Wyatt just start coming with us and you know not not go in and pack pails but if he if he handed some pails over the fence just start slowly getting them back to doing some stuff you know there gets to be a part where you want to baby them and take care of them and then there's a part where you're only gonna get strong again as if you get working so that's what we'll do is get them back working, but slowly make sure that with his, how he broke both hips, you don't want him, even though he's healed up, he's healing really good, you just don't want him to slip or fall or, you know, have a heifer run by him and boot him one. That's what happened to Ty years back as we were sorting cows and a cow come by and just 
cranked him one and it actually knocked him out and he he has permanent damage from that one so when he got diagnosed with high blood pressure they wondered if he had kidney damage from that hit but he does have physical problems from he got hit in the hip but like I said he I don't know if it was the pain or what but he passed right out and he collapsed and I had to scoop him up and get him out of there and we took him to the hospital on that time so so when this summer when I took him to the hospital for his concussion after getting bucked off the horse twice when I got mad at him told him to keep riding then they have that all on the file and they kind of suggested that on each time on the file it, it said he was doing work with his father when he got hurt so but like I said in my other video Tristan's just been a real lifesaver he's done so much work and like I said it's not his wheelhouse but man he we don't he doesn't always understand exactly what I'm asking and we get in our little arguments but he sure has been willing this morning he went with my father down to the river to the little house at the river and to gather up tables and chairs for today for Boxing Day uh, supper or I don't know what we call it it's in the middle of the afternoon everyone comes for pizza all my mom's family comes so he went there and the snow drifts were three feet deep and down that and they drove to get to the little house at the river they got to go down the hill and up a switch back and it's kind of hairy in the summertime but with snow drifts everywhere dad said that Tristan got uh, pretty scared when he was flying with that truck and four-wheel drive trying to get it hitting hard enough to break through the drifts but like I said he's Tristan's been a lot of help like I said he still needs to find a job in town and and he still needs to his goal is to move back to the city where he enjoys himself and he can like I said he he doesn't have a driver's license by choice that was what he didn't want one and we keep telling him if he had one it would give him more freedom but he's not ready for that yet so but he wants to get back up to Lethbridge where he can walk around and go to the movies and have the freedoms that he doesn't have being stuck out on the farm and I was once young too and I understand that and it's nice to be able to walk around in your underwear and not have your mom say go put pants on because if it's your house you can do it so. the Sun feels wonderful coming through these windows like I said this tractor I I glow plugged it when you, you turn the key on and then it glow plugs and then it, I mean it was plugged in but who she she turned over pretty, uh, probably as slow as it's ever turned over and I've started it plenty colder than it is today but maybe it just shows that things are getting worn and, and maybe it's the I, I'm due for an oil change and maybe like I said the oils doesn't have the same properties now that it's it's due for a change but if it warms up a little before the week so I'll have the oil changed on this tractor I've got to put a do an oil change on Ty's truck before it goes back up to before he goes to school and and then my pickup needs an oil change and then Wyatt's new pickup needs a new battery it's just a little weak And then my wife's truck, uh, her, the thermostat's been sticking, and so it'll stick and it'll, it won't open until it's at 125, and then it'll open and then it'll stay, it'll stick open and then it'll, uh, like I said, it'll stick open and then, and then all of a sudden it'll just control right at 100 degrees and the truck will stay just perfect. And but like I said, one. 
it's okay if it sticks open, it just means you get cold inside driving. And my wife's cold every time she's driving, so that doesn't change too much. But like I said, if she if it doesn't open and the truck overheats, then you're in real trouble. So I gotta change the thermostat, but I might have to get my tools gathered up and find a friend with a shop because I'll tell you this morning trying to get things started up even with my gloves on my fingers got pretty pretty chilly and I know I don't want to go and start turning wrenches like I said with the the wind chill this morning we were about minus 46 and that's plenty cold enough we're not supposed to be calving yet but we bred some of those show heifers early and some of the purebreds got bred early and last year we lost a set of twins on boxing day from Ty's $15,000 cow and I was in a lot of trouble over that one so I went and walked the cows this morning where normally I would just drive out through them but I walked it just to make sure and I was pretty humbled by the time I got back to the house because it was chilly. But Christmas was really fun. The kids really liked what they got. Uh, Ty is going to go work on a big ranch uh, in the spring when his spring semester's done. He's got a job working on a big ranch. So his his Christmas presents were, were very much things that he could use, so a lot of practical gifts. He got lots of clothes, but he, he got a brand new set of hobbles and a nice banana saddlebag, you know, nice good leather one, $180 kind of saddlebag that you can tie on behind the candle of a saddle. and and uh, got a new pocket knife that's pretty high quality and so he, he got lots of and Tristan did get another knife seeing as he lost one in the well he was cutting bales here last so but like I said a lot of stuff Ty got is for going cowboy and I'm gonna get him for his birthday I guess I shouldn't say he'll probably watch the video, but I got some other things I'm looking for for his birthday. It's in February. But he'll, uh, but like I said, more things that'll help him when he goes. Like I said, when you just ranch small like us, it's a little different than when you go work a ranch that's running 5,000 cows. But it sounds like he's going to be doing some fencing, but he'll have we're gonna go meet his boss this week and do a tour of the ranch I've been there before I've actually calved cows one year there and we calved the pasture I worked on calving was a 500 head purebred Angus pasture where you had to to weigh every calf and and tag them all and then and then I worked the cull pasture and there was about 200 cull cows that calved and some of them would you know, we're me, like really, really mean, like people hunters. And a lot of them would have like a cancer eye or, you know, when you have 5,000 cows, you end up with some cull cows that, and a lot of them would be ones that would prolapse or something. So those ones, we would calve them out. And then once they were oh, a month old, they well, once they cow every, every week you'd move the calved ones out to another pasture and then when those calves were a month old they got weaned off and the cull cows got taken to a feedlot but they would get tagged as culls and like and then the calves would get sold for roping calves and a calf roper professional calf roper guy would buy all the calves and then he'd he'd peddle them to his friends and use his own and and he'd host calf roping so but Ty's pretty excited they went up to the school to interview him they had a career day at the at the college and then they interviewed him and and then they hired him so it's pretty exciting 
to go work on a big ranch. Like I said, it's a little different, you know, going out and working two, three hundred cows and or else going out and, and working, you know, the idea that he's gonna get to brand calves for a month is kind of exciting for him. And he'll get to rope lots of cows where, like, I mean, we rope cows, but we don't rope them if they don't need to get roped. So he'll go out there and, and he'll get to rope and doctor cows and, and bulls all the time. You just get that many animals and there's always something to, to doctor. And, and like I said, they don't, the only time those cows see a krell is when they preg test in the fall and get their calves weaned. Other than that, those cows would never see a krell or a squeeze shoot. Anything you need to do would be on the end of a nylon. So it'll be fun for him. And it'll help him decide what he wants to do. He's doing animal science and then he'll do egg business. And so he'll have he'll have two diplomas when he's done. And you know, it's what his plan is right now. But if he goes and works a big ranch, then he'll know whether or not he wants to work a big ranch. Or if he wants to work a smaller purebred operation or or what he wants to do. But like I said, when I was his age I didn't want to do nothing but ride a horse every day and take care of cows and I can totally understand but as long as like I said he knows that he needs an education so as long as he gets his education that's the main thing and then like I said if he gets his education then you know maybe after 10 years of working there he could become one of the managers or something or at least get experience and you work there and you do a good job and get a reputation in the neighborhood then you know some of those smaller ranches you know that are running five six seven eight hundred cows you know around them might hire them on or like I said you get a, a 200 head or 300 head purebred outfit to they need a herdsman that can handle cows they'll have lots of life experience working that kind of outfit so anyhow this was just supposed to be a test to see how these glasses worked out so I guess if it's all no good you'll never see this and if it's marginal you'll probably see it <laughs> so hopefully it worked out so be sure to comment rate and subscribe and have yourselves a, a good day plus a good holiday take care